Hi, you with Julian on the Brown Note and a review of Bullet Train, uh, the Brad Pitt starring actioner that has uh, recently come out and done 250 million at the box office. Blimey. And been criticised for casting um, whitewashing actors, even though the author of the book has said get lost. And it's always Asian Americans, never people in Japan that are complaining about this happening. In fact, almost all of the complaints come from either the UK or America by the looks of it when they complain about the casting in these films. Whereas the people in Japan just look at it and go, are you crazy? We don't care about this. We want to see Brad Pitt. Honestly, this is what they say. Anyway, uh, David Leach hasn't a bad track record. He was a co-director of John Wick with Chad Stahelski, but um, wasn't really credited. But since then, not bad. Atomic Blonde, I thought was decent and worthy of a sequel. Deadpool 2, I actually hated Deadpool 1 and thought Deadpool 2 was pretty decent. But I did think Hobson Shaw was awful. Um, so this is a very simple story of a bullet train in Japan. Brad Pitt is, um, you know, these international hitmen sort of thing. He has to go on the train and retrieve a suitcase uh, with money in it. And he's kind of painted as this lackadaisical, <coughs> good guy, hitman, good guy, with an amiable sense of humour that spends a lot of the time on the phone to his handler, uh, he's standing in for someone else. On the train, there are another couple uh, of hitmen who are guarding the case. And the whole thing comes under the actor <clears throat> Michael Shannon. And his character is like the king honcho of um, the, the... He's called the White Death. And he's basically a, a Russian kingpin who overtook the Yakuza. And the whole thing is revolving around him. Um this is an amazingly simplistic setup. Um, there's really not much more to it than various hitmen squaring off on the train, apart from Joey King, who plays the uh, daughter of the Michael Shannon baddie, who is also a bit like the character from Kill Bill, the one with the chain and the... I can't remember what her name was, but a, um, a very dangerous schoolgirl um uh <clears throat> and there's a few little machinations of you know a backstory with how michael shannon's white death took over the yakuza in a very bloody way and uh bad bunny the singer turns up for better or worse as uh, a mexican hitman who lost everyone when who i said brad pitt stands in for another hitman the one that he's standing in for killed all of Bad Bunny's wedding party. Um, so he believes that Brad Pitt's this guy, even though he's got nothing to it. The entire movie is really plotted around that. These characters interacting on a train and um, nothing at all more happening. Um, so we get these, like, probably the most egregious part of this is it, it, it references films, but it references, like, virtually every second is constructed out of other films, but it references bad films. So they don't even give us the, I think it's Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson as this um, twin brothers um, hitmen on the train. And we get the Guy Ritchie thing, but we don't get Guy Ritchie from Lockstock or Snatch. We get, like, rock and roller Guy Ritchie. It's really cringe. Um, there's, there's a lot of tonal unevenness in this film. And there were passages of 20 minutes which I just couldn't deal with. It was just naff. When it leans hard into the comedy alone, uh, particularly with Brad Pitt, who's actually very good in this, and when it just plays as a comedy, I found it a lot more appealing. When it was doing its hitmen fighting on the train thing, which is done to a, an acceptable level, um, uh, they, it felt like there was no stakes at all involved. You felt like everyone was going to walk around with 10 bullet holes in them having conversations about what it was like. and Like nothing ever would really happen, and it doesn't ever really happen. Um there's so little to say it looks good on occasion but it seems to be you know we could have made this on any the, you know the bullet train serves as absolutely nothing there's no there's it, it could have been any train anywhere the suitcase i'm a guffin i guess 
is actually more boring than the MacGuffin because it really is, I think, just cash. Um, there's a, a ridiculous train crash in it which it, it disobeys the law of physics so badly. Um, like, you want to tick the box and say that this does exactly what it says on the tin, but it aims, it, it's like it knows what the bare minimum to do is and for, is just 5% worse. So even though there were passages in this film which I found entertaining, particularly when Brad Pitt was on screen and particularly, I guess, in the latter stages of the movie, Erin Taylor-Johnson was really good. Um, and people like him, when they collided with um, the Brad Pitt character, is it Erin Taylor-Johnson? Yeah. Um, the Jerry King character I just thought was just, just whack, just underdeveloped. And the Michael Shannon character not used anywhere near enough. Um, and there's just it's so uneven, it, it and it's and it borrows so heavily from, you know, it, it's just like there's there's a tier of sub Tarantino, and then there's more tiers going worse and worse, and it's kind of in that bracket. So it's actually a pretty bad film. Um, it will it get you over the line? Honestly, it's almost like one of its saving graces is that you'll never remember how particularly not good it was. So a very short review, Bullet Train, doesn't deserve any more. I will give it a 4 out of 10, just shy of even being worth watching once, to be honest. <laughs>